well, I don't know that this space can take very much of this and this this morning. What's up, Pastor uh, Brian? Well, Pastor Karen, are you insinuating that my weight gain is uh, no, taking no, up no, more no. volume? No, 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 it's the color. It's oh, the it's color. the color. It's, it's Oh, it's the jacket. It's the jacket. It's the jacket. Okay, all right, now I get it. I thought you and were saying something about my tummy. the dress, what's up? Hey, did we not do something similar to this last year? And it was really blatantly <laughs> obvious. So welcome yeah. to Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. You're not wearing a sweater, I'm not wearing a sweater, but it's really ugly. And so we're so happy you're with us. If you are wearing your ugly Christmas sweater or jammies, yeah, yeah uh, some, some could be in their Christmas jammies. Why don't you take a picture, send it along, hashtag Bridge Christmas. We're so happy to be here with you today. And now, Maureen will lead us in Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Don't you love carols? I love carols and I love Maureen. Amazing, it's gonna be a great morning of worship. Oh 
My name is Anna Anandarajan, and I'm here with Millicent Day, one of our Christmas cheer coordinators, to thank all of you on behalf of the team and to give you an update about Christmas cheer. Millicent, this is our fourth year of Christmas cheer, and once again, we have surpassed our goal because everyone was all in, and we as a team can't thank you enough for that. Thank you, Pastor Anna. Christmas cheer is more than a gift basket. The experience of creating, delivering, and receiving a basket touches lives, enlarges our hearts, and allows one to experience the wonder of God's love mm -hmm. in a tangible way. Mm -hmm. To our Bridge family, our life groups, and our community sponsors, thank you all so much for your support. Your generosity has touched so many lives. We were able to sponsor families within our local church, the York Region District School Board, Markham Pregnancy Center, and individuals from Rahab Ministries and 360 Kids. With each of your help and generosity, we were able to raise monetary gifts, gift cards, food and hygiene products worth more than $36,000 and provided a blessing basket to 165 families. A big thank you to all of you. At The Bridge, everything is done in teams, and so is Christmas cheer. We want to thank the 47 plus volunteers who helped collect, sort, label, and deliver these gifts over these three weeks. Please know that we could not have done this without your help. We appreciate all that you've done to make the Christmas season a little brighter for these families. May God continue to bless you all and may your baskets always be full to overflow. Remember, Remember the model is Jesus, Jesus and, and the motivation, motivation is love. Wow, wasn't that an amazing way to start off our Christmas season? Such extravagant generosity. Well, again, welcome. And just in case you weren't tuned in right at the beginning, this isn't our normal dress, Not normal. but it's ugly Christmas sweater Sunday. And we hope that you are participating. So don't forget to take those pics, post hashtag Bridge Christmas on social media. We wanna see what's happening with all of us together. If you're new this morning, we would love to connect further with you. And a good way of doing that is by attending the Connect Night tomorrow, December 14th at 8 p.m. It's a Zoom Connect, and it gives our Connections team an opportunity to simply say hi to those who are relatively new. Head over to thebridgemarkham.com slash new to register. Awesome, thank you, Karen. And I wanna thank you for your weekly and generous giving. Here at The Bridge, we, we ask people to be thoughtful and prayerful when it comes to their giving, and we just appreciate you doing that. So we wanna give you an opportunity this morning to give, whether it be through push pay or e-transfer, we thank you for your faithfulness and thoughtfulness in this effort. Throughout my life, Christmas Eve has been such a memorable, remarkable evening. And this year, no exception. Even though it's online, here at The Bridge, there will be two online services, 4.30 and 6.30. If you head over to thewonder.tv, you'll see everything related to these services. Invite your friends and your family to join with you virtually. This service will resonate and cause thoughtful celebration as you lean into the meaning of this season. And Christmas Eve has always been an opportunity for us to give to the community. So let's hear from Deb, who is the director of our On Mission Ministry, as to how we as a church can continue to be generous this season. Hello everyone, I am so excited to be here today to tell you about our Christmas Eve offering. I'm Deb Childs, Director of On Mission at The Bridge, and I have the privilege of being able to connect with our four community partners throughout the year to help identify ways we, as a community, can support their work. 
One very important way of helping our partners continue to serve vulnerable families and individuals is through our Christmas Eve offering. Our entire offering each Christmas Eve goes directly to the Markham Stovall Crisis Pregnancy Centre, the Centre for Dreams, Out of the Cold and the Markham Food Bank. This year has been especially difficult for these organizations and we are praying that the bridge will be able to significantly help meet some of their needs. Did you know that the Markham Food Bank now serves 500 families per month? This is up from 350, which is about 2,000 people. While they report generous giving within the community during COVID, they are still in need of funds to support the growing need for the purchase of fresh produce, meat, and a number of other items. Another partner I'd like to tell you about is Mosaic Interfaith Out of the Cold. Out of the Cold serves hundreds of homeless individuals from November to March each year. Operations are a lot different this year, and although guests are able to access a warm meal, and a safe place to sleep, they have lost access to basic necessities, such as a safe place to rest during the day and access to showers. Through our Christmas Eve offering, we hope to be able to provide enough funds to help out of the cold raise enough money to have an on-site shower trailer for guests to access. This very simple need will do so much to bring dignity to the most at risk this season. In addition to missing the opportunity to serve our guests from out of the cold this year, we are also missing our friends from the Center of Dreams. Center of Dreams is an organization we have provided space to for weekly sports and some amazing annual awards galas. The Center for Dreams, if you don't know, is a day program dedicated to providing a curriculum designed specifically for adults living with a developmental disability. This amazing organization strives to help their members fulfill their goals and dreams. And it has been especially challenging for them to get the right technology in place so that they can expand their virtual programs. Our Christmas Eve offering will be sure to support their much needed daily programming. And another long-term partner we are privileged to work with is the Markham Stouffville Crisis Pregnancy Center. This is a community organization in place to help and provide hope and healing to all individuals experiencing an unexpected pregnancy, challenges during pregnancy and early parenting, or struggling emotionally after an abortion experience. Through kindness, compassion, and grace, the Markham Stovall Crisis Pregnancy Center expresses the love of Jesus to all those they serve. Let's do what we can to help them meet their financial, operational needs so they can continue to support the growing number of women and families in need. Please head to our website if you would like to know more about the organizations I have mentioned. And over the next couple of weeks, please be praying about our partners and specifically about your Christmas Eve offering. And consider how you as an individual or your family can contribute to impact the lives of so many. Thank you always for your generosity. How have you experienced God in the small everyday moments of life? I'll say you know, there are days when I wake up and I'm overwhelmed. There are so many things going on in my mind, so many tasks that I need to achieve at work and at home. And so I'm so overwhelmed, wondering where to start. And, you know, sometimes I just kind of like pray about them, ask God for inspiration. How do I go about it? And then inspiration just seems to come from nowhere. You know, before I know it, you know, those seemingly impossible things just kind of like disappear and like the stress is all gone and so that leaves me in awe yeah because it just it couldn't have been me it wasn't by my wisdom so looking back do you remember a christmas where you experienced god in a way that caused you awe wonder and amazement oh well i'll say that would be 2012 christmas um 
uh, I was out of work and uh, that lasted for quite a while uh, till like some, sometime late November and um, I'd been applying but no interviews coming in and uh, I, I kept praying and uh, out, of, out of the blues a friend referred me for a job which uh, I never applied for. I just got the opportunity and I interviewed and got the job. Just just a few weeks to Christmas. My goodness, it was like Christmas came early for me and it was a blessing. God came right on time. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. This is how we experience God's wonder. Good morning, Bridge. Thank you for joining us today on Ugly Christmas Sweater Sunday. Well, I thought, since we're already in our cozy Christmas sweaters, what better way to start today than a Christmas story? So why don't you grab a coffee, your tea, hot chocolate, sit back and relax for a few minutes as we listen in to the story of a young, profound woman. I can only wonder, Mary exclaimed. I wonder what it will be like, Mother, when he comes. Whatever it might look like, it will be magnificent. I can hardly wait. I know, Mary, me too, her mother responded. Do you think we'll be able to meet him, Mary asked. Oh, sweetheart, I think it will be much more than that. Now lay your head down. We have a long day ahead of us. Mary found herself unable to fall asleep as she imagined what life would be like once the Messiah, the Son of God that was prophesied about, came to earth. What would be the entrance? Who would be privileged enough to be part of it? What would he look like? What would be life be like once he comes? Everything they spoke about, was it to be true? These thoughts ran through Mary's mind as she drifted off to another night's sleep with much joy and hope in her heart. Mary and her family had much anticipation in their life. Mary was soon to be ceremonially wed to Joseph a carpenter. Mary knew they couldn't have the lavish of ceremonies since her family didn't have a lot of wealth, but that didn't matter to Mary. She was happy and content. And Joseph, well, he was quiet and had an incredibly comforting demeanor about him. She knew he was going to make a great husband. And they had much anticipation about the day the Messiah would come. They knew life as they know it would change. She couldn't wait. There was so much hope in her life. Mary was ready for it. So she thought. A few weeks went by and Mary and her family were preparing for the ceremony of her and Joseph. Though in Jewish law they were already considered Mary, they had yet to have the official ceremony. It's perfect, she exclaimed. Oh, thank you, Father, I love it. It's exactly how I pictured it to be. Now all Mother has to do is add some beautiful flowers and it will be ready to go. After a tight hug with her father, Mary ran off to continue helping her mother put on the last touches on her dress, the most perfect dress. After a full day of preparation and much anticipation toward the big day, Mary decided it was time for her to get some much needed sleep. A few hours passed by and suddenly she was jolted out of bed and awoken by a great light. Startled and troubled, Mary listened as these words were spoken to her. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Not completely convinced of the reassurance given through those words, Mary wondered what or who was before her, why there now in the deep of the night in her room, in the middle of her confusion and thought babbling, Mary was filled with wonder. Could this be an angel? But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Wait a minute. Slow down. Hang on. The thoughts continued to race through her mind. What? 
give birth to a son, me, the son of God? But who am I? Oh no, this is some kind of joke. Did Joseph put them up to this? Joseph and I haven't even... What? I had so many plans for the wedding. Despite the overwhelming emotions and thoughts of the moment, Mary simply responds with this. How will this be, since I am a virgin? Her mind racing once again. Was I chosen to carry the chosen one? Am I enough? Will I have enough? How do I care for the Savior of the world? I don't have money or a lot of resources. My family isn't even that important. Could this really be? But the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. She began to think about Joseph, her parents, the people in town. Oh no, the plans are changing. This isn't what I had planned, she thought to herself. Suddenly, Mary felt a deep understanding of the urgency of this moment. The world is in need of hope. It's in need of a savior. The thoughts in her mind slowed down and she began to posture her heart to God in the words of the angel and she saw the wonder of this great purpose she was chosen for. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Alone and staring off in the dark night sky, Mary was contemplating the road ahead. She was fully aware of the long and difficult journey ahead of her. It wasn't what she expected and there were certainly some obstacles to overcome. Joseph would likely call everything off. She might be outcasted from her family and community. She asked herself, where will I go? Who will be with me? This changes everything. Her thought of what life would look like once the Messiah came into the world suddenly changed. She no longer saw a grand entrance. She saw her, a baby. Is this really it? Mary was very aware of who she wasn't. She wasn't a person of status or wealth. She didn't hold much position or authority, but she was also very aware of who she was, a child of God called and chosen to fulfill a great purpose. Every movement and kick reminded her of who she was carrying, of what was to come. The power of Jesus in her was so evident that when she went to stay with her cousin Elizabeth for a little while, the baby in the womb of Elizabeth leapt with joy. In response, Mary's praises and adoration ran, rang out in song to God, thankful and grateful for his love lavished upon her. Mary found herself in many difficult moments throughout that time, and at times doubt and fear seeped in, and yet, somehow, she had felt more closer to God throughout it all. She was filled with awe at the wonder of God's great power. She was filled with hope of what was to come. It had been a long nine months. After a very long journey and difficult time finding a place to lay their heads, the moment came. The time had come. The Savior of the world was about to change everything. Yet there he was, a baby, just a baby. Joseph and Mary had to admit that here was a baby who seemed at first glance like any other newborn child. He cried in the middle of the night. He hungered for milk. He needed fresh, swaddling clothes every now and then. But this baby was anything but ordinary. For he was God in human flesh, the one to captivate the hearts of his people and bring them to the Father. Mary looked into the eyes of her child, filled with wonder. After all, God chose for Jesus to be born in humble form through her, a lowly servant girl. There's so much wonder found in the story of Mary. I hope you captured some of those in the story I just read. It helps us see who Mary was and where she was at in life when she received this extraordinary call. 
Mary was an ordinary person like you and I, but she was chosen to carry the Son of God. It was in the middle of her simple, quiet life that she was called. She was a very young woman who didn't have years of experience and maturity behind her. She didn't come from a prestigious family. In fact, they were a very low economic status, and she certainly wasn't perfect. She likely had many doubts, fears, and questions along the way. Who was Mary that she was chosen for such an extravagant purpose? Imagine if one day you're wondering when and how the Messiah was to come, and the next day you're chosen to bring him into the world. Imagine her wonder when she realized she not only could anticipate his coming, but she got to participate in it that she had been chosen to be the one to carry the very purposes of God into the world. Mary was not of any royalty or nobility. She didn't have status or wealth, yet she was chosen by God to birth the Son of God. And though you and I may not be birthing the Son of God, we all have something that God has chosen us to birth. Each one of you, like Mary, is chosen by God. It's the wonder we see in the story of Mary and the hope that Jesus brings to our life, that we too would be partakers in God's great plans and purposes. God works in our smallness to accomplish his great purpose. When God chose Mary, when God chose to send Jesus into the world, when he sent his son to die on a cross, he thought of you and I. How wonderful it is to be chosen by God. Through the story of Mary, I want us to see two wonders revealed through God in his vastness and greatness and how he chooses us in our frailty and brokenness. That despite all of our insecurities and limitations, he sees us as his beloved children. Ephesians 1 verse 4 says, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. The wonder of God choosing us is when we realize we don't just anticipate what God is doing here on earth, we also get to be part of it. God has chosen us in our frailty and humanity to be bearers of the hope that Jesus brings to the world. And secondly, we're gonna see that when we listen to Mary's story, we see the wonder that it is each day to choose to respond to God. What we do know about Mary and what we see in scripture is that her response to God in the middle of the most life-altering, world-turned-upside-down moment was full of eagerness, adoration, and hope. Let's discover the wonder of Mary's response as she was chosen for this great purpose. First, we see the wonder of God that he brings his sovereignty to our frailty. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at the story of Mary and realize in and of herself, Mary would be unable to conceive the Son of God. For one, she was a virgin. It simply was impossible for her. But in verse 35 of Luke, the angel says to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. And then further down in verse 37, it says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. God had chosen Mary, and that meant he would do everything he needed to do to see that the purposes of God came to pass in her life. In choosing us, God brings his sovereignty to our frailty. He brings possibilities to impossibilities and his security to our insecurities. In Psalm 18, verse 20, it says, "'In your strength I can crush an army. "'With my God I can scale any wall.'" I often think to myself, God could have chosen any way for Jesus to come to the earth. He has all power and all authority in himself to do that. But God in his infinite power chooses such a way that is full of humility 
and humanity. And then I realized the great wonder in that, that in the great power of God, that in his vastness and greatness, he looked down with such love for his people and so desired to choose Mary, to choose us to reveal his great power through. He saw and knew all that we were incapable of, all that we had done. He saw humanity in its rawest form. He saw all of Mary's limitations. He saw a lowly servant that had all cards stacked against her. He knew all the impossibilities we as humans would see. And he says to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Do you know that same power is in you through Jesus Christ? We are broken people, but Jesus came to make us whole again so that the power of God can work in and through us. We can't miss that great wonder. When we feel incompetent and disqualified, when we feel like life has become mundane, God still chooses us. We see in the story of Mary that a woman who seemed disqualified for this great task, and yet in it, we see God's great power working through her made it possible. Do you ever feel like there are many impossibilities before you? You wonder, how will I make it through the day or even the next moment? Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. When the angel of the Lord to told Mary that she would give birth to a son, she says, but how will this be? For I am a virgin. You see, she didn't ask, what about Joseph? Or what about our family? Or she didn't even question her own competency. I imagine upon hearing that you would be the one to birth the son of God, that it was you who would be the mother to the Messiah. You would think, am I capable of being the mother to the Son of God? I mean, being a mother is hard enough as it is, but to lead, guide, and parent the one who is perfect, how would my imperfections as a mother ever be enough for the perfections of Jesus, Son of God? And yet, she was reassured of the power of God that would work through her to make this possible and that he would reveal his great power. I would imagine that Mary thought if God could do the impossible in her life, then she knew and believed he could certainly overcome the obstacles. Mary may not have considered the full extent of what was ahead of her. She may not have imagined the pain of watching her child bear the weight of sin and die a terrible death, but she knew that her life would hold many sacrifices as the mother of the Messiah. But what she could see and anticipate was the promise and hope that this baby meant for the world. And that's what mattered. God chose a young, lowly servant to bring the Son of God into the world so that we could see and know his divine power in our lives. Secondly, through the story of Mary, we can see the wonder of God's purpose in the process. We know of many obstacles that we face. We know there was a difficult journey ahead of her. We know that she was displaced from her home and that King Herod killed young babies to try to kill the Messiah. Joseph and Mary were aware of this. We can look at all of these things that were before her and think, why this way? Why did this have to happen? I wonder if Mary ever had those questions. Imagine being at the end of your pregnancy, ready to give birth and finding nowhere to go. Could you picture Mary there at the sound of yet another innkeeper saying, sorry, there's no room here. Maybe she was crying out to God, but God, he's coming. Can you not just make this work out for us? In this season, I found myself asking similar questions to God. God, when is this virus going to end? God, why does it have to be like this? How is this going to work? Is it going to work? And yet, as I look at Mary and what she would have been going through, their long journey, the difficult labor, 
I know the moment she glanced into the eyes of Jesus, she would have known all that weight, pain, and anticipation was worth it. That what God had done in her life over those months was all wrapped up in this moment. This moment that would forever change the history of the world and this moment that would forever change the course of her life. And that made it worth it. Jesus came at a time when there was much turmoil in the world. They were in desperate need of a savior. People were anticipating the Messiah that would come and change everything. But it wasn't in the way people thought. It wasn't in the timeline that they had wanted. But what we do see through the process in God's plan is the faith that rose up in Mary. It was the faith that rose up in Joseph through this, and it extends to the other people that we will hear in the weeks to come, the shepherd, the wise men, and you and I. When our plans change, do we trust God's process? Do we trust his greater plan for us? Romans 8 verse 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. In choosing us, he, God promises to be with us. I love the promises of God Pastor Brian taught about last week. And as I listened, I could only think what an ever-present God that we have, that he is working all things out for our good. He is our shepherd there to guide us. He's willing to go after the one. He keeps us safe and secure. He is our present help in time of need. And the promise of peace is there for us at any moment. It speaks to who God is in our life and what he's doing even in the middle of difficult times. The very way Jesus came into the world, the pregnancy of Mary, the story of Mary, shows us that God often does things differently than we would expect. That along with accomplishing his purposes in the world, he's doing something in us that we might not always understand, but it is for our good. And when we can see the wonder in that, when we can see the purpose in everyday moments, that there's purpose on difficult days, on big days, on the mundane days, that God is working all things out for our good. The wonder that God cares about who we are becoming so much that he'd rather take us through this process of becoming more like him, drawing closer to him than responding to our timeline doesn't always fit with our standard of time or our expectation, but when we turn our anticipation toward what God is working out, then we would begin to see in every day the purpose in every moment. We could begin to see that though this might be a tough season, it's been hard to not meet in person in a physical building and be at church together. But God, in the middle of this, we have seen the gospel message spread out to the ends of the earth. God, this has been so long and unexpected, yet God, we have seen people rally together like never before to help people in need. We see his great purpose beyond our circumstances. When we live with that hope and expectation of what is to come, as Mary did awaiting the Savior, we cling to the hope that is Jesus, that against all common knowledge, all human standards, his ways are higher, his thoughts are greater, and we can trust him in the process. We can trust him when things get difficult. We can trust him with our life. And from that, we see in Mary a great example that we can overcome in difficult moments with great faith. Now let's talk about three ways that Mary responded to these wonders of God choosing her. And what we can learn from her when we realize that God is also birthing something in our life. Number one, Mary was fully surrendered to God. I often look with wonder of Mary's response to God. She says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. 
in that moment when she responded with that, her life was about to turn upside down. Everything was going to change. Everything except for one thing, that she had been chosen by God. And she knew that made it more than enough. Her life was surrendered to God and her response to that was, Lord, whatever your will for my life is, so be it. That's how she responds to this moment that was, she was being chosen to carry the Son of God. May your word be fulfilled in me. Yes, God, I know this is going to interrupt my life. I know things are going to look different on the other side, but I've seen your great power and I believe that you have made a way through your son. Mary was willing to submit her life to God's plan no matter what it would cost her. She knew that same power would bring redemption to the world and that made all things possible through Christ. And in that, she gave her life to what God had asked of her. I often ask myself, if that were me, would I fully surrender everything that I have in that moment? Would I have hesitated or even rejected God's power and purpose in my life? Could I have said, whatever your will is, let it be? Do we live in the wonder of God's great power that in each moment we're ready to respond to what God is asking of us, what God is requiring of us? Big, small, everyday moments, life altering. Are we ready? Are we filled with the wonder at his great power at work within us? Secondly, what we can learn from Mary is that as she surrendered her life, she lived it out with great faith in God. We look ahead with great expectation and faith, but faith is believing what is unseen. Do you believe God is making something great of 2020? Do you believe God is doing something great in your life? Do you believe in the promises of God that Pastor Brian spoke about last week? Do you believe Jesus changes your life? For Mary and Joseph, they too didn't have the full picture. They couldn't see the full extent of what was to come, but that didn't change their response and the way that they lived that journey with great faith. In fact, Mary's great faith in God began long before the moment the angel visited her. She had built a life of faith in God and the promise of the coming Messiah. It's what made her ready and available the moment the angel came. And it's also what made it possible for her to endure when things got difficult, when obstacles and hardship came her way. She lived out her faith every day through her walk and journey. We read in scripture when Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth in Luke 1, Elizabeth says to Mary in verse 45, you are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Mary didn't just say yes to God that night the angel came, but she made a decision to stay faithful and to say yes to God every day through her life, even in the struggles and the unknowns of her story. She saw the wonder of God working all things out for her good, and she saw the faithfulness of God in her life and knew her faithfulness to Him would bring about the greatest hope of the world. That same faith can propel us to live each day on purpose, knowing God chose to use our life to bring that same hope to the world. She surrendered her life to God, and then each day, in the, even in the middle of hardship and pain, she chose to live out that reality through her life because she had seen God's power and believed in His purposes. Number three, Mary lived with much adoration for God. She truly loved him and was in relationship with him. In the last few verses of her song of praise, we find in Luke 1, it says, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl, and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. 
She talks about the wondrous things that God had done for her ancestors in that same song. She's remembering the mercies God has given to her and his people. She is saying to us that while she might be nervous or unaware of all that may happen in her future, she knows God would have chosen her only to abandon her. Mary knew God was with her and we see it through her deep relationship with him, her adoration and devotion to God. Her response to his presence was deep reverence of him. Even as her son, she had great respect and adoration for him as both her son and her savior. We know through scripture that even in the most painful moments of her life, she remained close to God. She stood there in awe and wonder of whatever was before her, God was walking it through with her. You see, through Mary's life, her deep love and relationship with God assured her that God would not leave her in the midst of it. She needed only to remain there with him. There is great wonder to be found in remaining in the presence of God, in adoration of him, that every day we wake up with the awe and reverence of God and that he is there right in that moment in every decision. Through the story of Mary, we see God. He chose this unlikely candidate. He chose an unlikely entrance for a savior and he chose an unlikely process. Yet in the middle of it, we get to discover the wonder that is, that shows us 1 Peter 2 verse 9, for you are a chosen people, a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. And that wonder, when discovered, propels us to live surrendered to his ways to remain steadfast and faithful because we trust him and to remain in relationship and reverence to the one who chose to come for us. Through the story of Mary, through the birth of Jesus, through the wonder of God's choice, it reveals to us the power of God in our lives and the great plans and purpose he has for each one of us. Feet. 
I just want to thank Emily and Maureen for, for just bringing us to a place during this Christmas season where Jesus is just seen so clearly. Thank you so much for, for that. Oh, so good. Karen. Yeah, now head over to Hub Live Christmas Edition, the last one before Christmas. See you there. Have a great week. All right. <laughs>